There are hundreds of ancient Chinese weapons. They come in every imaginable shape and size. There are weapons that stab, slash, cut, scratch, smash, bash, and claw. In the hands of a kung fu expert, they are all lethal weapons. We count down 10 of the most devastating kung fu weapons in order to uncover what might be the deadliest Chinese killing machine of all time. It takes skill to wield Chinese lethal weapons. Though Kung Fu is often considered an unarmed and defensive discipline of Chinese martial arts, its techniques can be applied to all weapons, often making them even more deadly. Kung Fu weapons come in countless shapes and sizes. Some, such as swords and spears, are known throughout the world. Others, such as the long-handled saber, erme needles, antlers and dark judge brushes, are distinctively Chinese. But no matter how outlandish their design or how poetic their name, they can all kill. Join us as we count down 10 of the deadliest Chinese weapons. The saber and the sword are two of the most formidable weapons in the Kung Fu arsenal. The sword, with its thin, straight blade, is known in China as the gentleman of all weapons. Its heavier relation, the saber, bears an even more exalted title. The saber is called the master of all weapons because it causes more damage to the enemy's body than any other kung fu weapon. Light and agile. Like a flying phoenix, that's the sword. Its main form of attack is the thrust. Savage and powerful, like a fierce tiger, that's the saber. It's used to chop, slash, and hack. The thin blade of the Chinese sword has razor-sharp edges on both sides. Because it has two edges, it requires more practice and technique. While larger and heavier, the saber has just a single edge. Therefore, there is a saying, saber, power, won by strength, sword, soft, won by technique. The sword and the saber match the human body's proportions. Being neither too long or short, they are perfect for use. Within their effective striking distances, they are the best weapons. Little Tiger has practiced Kung Fu for over 20 years. A former member of the Guangzhou martial arts team, he is an expert on sword and saber techniques. Sword play is brisk, graceful and dynamic. Sword play requires more than just a strong arm. In thrusting, the shoulder and the wrist must form a straight line, and the movement comes from the waist. Because it's a straight line, it's fast, merciless, and accurate. The thrust is the sword's most lethal attack. Flicking involves lifting up the blade from below. Pointing uses the tip of the sword to stab the enemy's shoulder or wrist. It can serve to disarm one's opponent. Chopping means bringing down the blade from overhead. This puts your body weight as well as your strength behind the blow. 
and you can even jump up to chop downwards. You bring out the saber's power with your own power. The sideways slash is another important saber technique. The fighter can straight slash or reverse slash to attack an enemy's neck or legs. Wrapping around the head is a distinctive saber move. It is both offensive and defensive. The move is unique to the saber. It allows ones to neutralize an enemy's attack and to immediately launch a counter-attack of one's own. In China, swords were more than just weapons. In ancient times, it wasn't only soldiers who carried swords. Scholars, philosophers, even poets wore them. A sword on the belt was a badge of honor, proof that the owner was a master of swords. In the cut and thrust of battle, an enormous variety of strange and exotic weapons were used. Multi-bladed rings and tridents, deadly needles, lightning-fast whips and dreaded metal brushes. Our countdown of China's most deadly weapons continues after the break. The Chinese have devised a huge number of weapons over thousands of years. We're counting down China's most deadly weapons. At number 10, was the saber and the sword. Now we continue the countdown at number nine with one of the oldest weapons in the Kung Fu arsenal. When the first emperor of China died over 2,000 years ago, he was buried with more than 7,000 life-sized terracotta warriors. It was only fitting in life, the emperor used his army to turn several warring states into a single country. While the terracotta army is only made of clay, they once held real weapons in their hands. Chief among them were the bow and the crossbow. Bows and arrows have been used since the old Stone Age. Bows were usually fashioned from bamboo or wood. Their bowstrings were made from cow tendons, deer skin, or even silk. The traditional bows and arrows of China were often used as the first line of attack on the battlefield. They had a range of up to 100 meters. An experienced bowman could make around 10 shots per minute. Conventional arrows were, however, light and could do little harm to an armored soldier. More powerful than the traditional bow and arrow was the mechanical crossbow. They could shoot a heavier arrow further and more accurately than a traditional bow. Some could even shoot five arrows at a time. An ingeniously simple mechanism holds the bowstring in place, releasing it when required by means of a trigger, shooting the bolt. Chinese soldiers used crossbows more than a thousand years before they appeared in Europe. They continued to use them until the last years of the 19th century. The mixture of copper and tin to make bronze resulted in the creation of many deadly new weapons. In terms of efficacy,